Now we have Senna McCluskey with the A Country Without Culture. He speaks of the state of Singapore and its intricate multiculture. He believes that this fine balance of many different cultures is the perfect ground for growth. Imagine a land overflowing with cultures and traditions. A land rich in nature and industry. A land rich with nature and industry. Some believe it to be ethnically diverse, being host to people of many different cultures, religions, backgrounds, and views, and often being described as a melting pot of cultures. However, others believe it to be whitewashed. They believe it to be a little bubble of snobby Westerners who act and think the same way as we do. However, this strangely wonderful land that I speak of is in fact called Singapore. I am one of the lucky few to have been born outside the small bubble, which is Upper Sandy Mount to Lower Dorky. And that has really helped me to shape my world views and opinions. Okay, let's backtrack a little bit. So first I'm gonna tell you where Singapore is. Singapore is a little tiny island state situated in the southeast of Asia underneath the Malaysian Peninsula. And to give you a better idea of how truly small it is, it's less than 1% the size of Ireland. And yes, it's even smaller than County Louth. But it's home to almost 6 million people. Despite of these obvious, huge, overcrowding issues, it's deceptively clean. And I mean super clean. It's in fact illegal to even be caught chewing gum in public. It's unheard of to see parks littered with even a scrap of rubbish, and crime rates are so low that you could walk around with a sign that says, rob me. Can you imagine an Ireland where this was the case? Cleaner streets where our parks and communities were free from litter and people were not afraid of walking on the streets late at night. These practices helped to make Singapore a far safer place for everybody to live in. So now that I've given you a brief sense of Singapore, let's discuss its culture, or lack thereof. Only about one quarter of people living in Singapore are actually indigenous to the country. That means that the other 75% are made up of Americans, the British, Europeans, the Chinese, Indians, and so, so, so many more. For reference, Ireland's population is made up of about 80% of people who have been living here for more than three generations. So what does this tell us about Ireland's culture? I mean, the statistics would show us that Ireland is, in fact, a whitewashed society, a little pocket of snobby Westerners who pretend to live in Asia but are really living in their own little bubble of people who act and think the same way as them. If you were a person doing a project on Singapore, you would probably think this is the case. However, I am a person who has spent more than half of their life living in this supposedly deculturalized society. And I can tell you with absolute certainty that believing that Singapore is whitewashed is so far from the truth. Singapore is so much more than what meets the eye. It is multicultural in the broadest sense of the word, and that is what makes it so successful. Okay, so let's begin by talking about the festivals that take place there every single year. Think of a country and we had their festival, from Chinese New Year to St. Patrick's Day. I mean, we had it all. That's the way it worked. While Singapore did itself have a couple of traditional festivals, such as National Day or the Festival of Light, it was in fact the accumulation of different cultures that really brought these festivals to life. Next, the most pivotal and crucial part of possibly any culture, of course, the food. So, Singapore is so famous for its food. There's no words to truly describe the extent and deliciousness of the food in Singapore. Again, think of a country and we had its food prepared in its most raw and purest form. You could go to Chinatown, where you could get traditional handmade Chinese dumplings, or you could even go to Little India, 
where you could get delicious aromatic curries, or maybe even mini Ireland, where you could get, um, I mean, you could get some unmarked stew with some unknown protein floating around in it. I don't know. See, the thing is, I do love fine Irish cuisine, as I'm sure most of us here do. But when you weigh it up against traditional Singaporean Hainese chicken rice, I mean, come on, there really is no comparison. In terms of food, it was pure heaven. So eccentric festivals, delicious food, and rich language. I mean, what more could you really want in a country? See, there was no single overbearing tradition or culture which led to the creation of, in my opinion, the perfect country where everyone was free to celebrate their identity. I got to experience everything that China, India, Pakistan, and so many more countries had to offer, all while being in an area of land less than 1% the size of Ireland. And yeah, it was even smaller than Louth. So let's get back to my original question. Is Singapore a whitewashed or multicultural society? Although it may at first seem to be lacking, Singapore has one of the most diverse and fruitful civilizations that this world has to offer. It is multicultural in the broadest sense of the word, and it is so successful due to this multicultural, multicultural population. And although its population may not all be from Singapore, the tradition and culture that they brought from their own countries helped to strengthen and bond what it is to be living in Singapore. Singapore, of course, is far from perfect. However, I do believe it's a place that every single country could take a page from. Now, Ireland has a long road ahead of it to become a fully multicultural state. We have huge issues that we still need to face in order to allow this complete culture shift. How can we call ourselves an open and welcoming society when systems such as direct provision still exist, which divide asylum seekers from the general population of Ireland? The lack of human rights that people in these systems face is dehumanizing and frankly appalling, and the horror stories that come out of these systems are nothing short of nightmares. Ireland prides herself on having open borders to everyone. However, she has closed down these borders to different cultures. I do believe there is still a chance. We have a lot of work to do, but I believe that if we all come together and allow a culture shift, we could be so much better off for it. And who knows, maybe one day we could even surpass Singapore. Thank you.